We're here on a status hearing. Mr. Albee's with us for the department. Casa is with us. Mr. Adams is with us representing the children. Mr. Pirtle is with us representing the mother, Ms. Atkins, who is with us. Uh, I don't see Taylor Atkins. He's not in my waiting room. So, all right, everybody's in. Everybody's connected to the audio. Mr. Albee, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Ms. Erica Flores. And where are they currently placed? Um, they are placed with a foster family currently. And where is that located? Um, they are located in Canadian. And oh, I'm sorry, that, Tampa. They are in Tampa. Okay. And is that placement meeting each of the boys' needs at this time? No. Are are the boys doing well in their placement? Yes, they are doing very well. Um, placement is updating um the boys on their dental. I mean, they're current with everything. Um Montana did have a vision exam uh on the 30th of November. Um, he is has something um called, I hope I'm saying this right, strombosis. It's just a misalignment of the eyes, and they do have a scheduled visit in Lubbock in January for that. Um Montana did have to have um, extensive dental surgery. He had to have white and silver crowns. He did have extractions of the um, of just the baby teeth. Um, they did fill in some cavities, but um, and he just goes back up for a follow up. But Utah did um, have good oral health. Okay. Any other special issues or special needs that these boys had that we need to make the court aware of today? Um, no. All right. Children's mother is Miss Jennifer Atkins. Yes. And she uh, has she had an opportunity to discuss a possible family plan with you? Yes. And did y'all develop a family plan of service? Yes. And was she a part of that decision making when the family plan of service was developed? Um, um just based she on she participated, correct? Yes. All right. And when y'all developed the, the services that you put in that family plan, was she, did she acknowledge that she understood those services? Yes. And has she signed the family plan of service? Yes. And has that family plan of service been filed with the court? Yes. Um, has Miss Atkins begun working the services in that service plan? Not quite yet. She oh. would you agree with me then that because she has not begun working with those those services that it would be contrary to the general welfare of these boys to return them home to her today? Yes. And that it would not be safe. Correct. I'll pass with the show. All right, thank you, Mr. Pertle. Thank you, Judge. Um uh, Erica, have you you said you went over the family plan of service with Miss Atkins, and she hasn't begun her services yet. Why hasn't she begun them? Um, she has not begun her services because she was in at Oceans here in Amarillo, um, a psychiatric hospital. She was in there for, I want to say, about like two and a half weeks. Um, was, was that place recommended to, to her by you? No, sir, it was not. Okay. Then why did she go there? Um. She was at her home um, due to the medication, I believe. Um, she woke up wondering where her children were at. Um, she called her mother to come help her find her children, and her mother then knew that something was wrong um, because obviously the children are in, in placement right now. They're with someone else, and her mother took her to the hospital, and it was court ordered there that she be admitted into Oceans in Amarillo. So was she evaluated at the hospital? Yes. And from that evaluation, they determined she needed to stay at the hospital. Yes. Okay. And since she's been there, is she now on the correct her medications to make her well? Well, we discussed this yesterday. Um, they went over her medication at Oceans. So from my understanding, um, they lowered her dosage there, I believe. But whenever she got back out... Um, she went back to her doctor, um, Dr. Cowell in Canadian, and he fixed her prescription. Um, I guess uh, Jennifer stated she was having withdrawals from the medications that they lowered at Oceans. But when she went back to Cowell, 
she, they fixed it is what I get from Jennifer. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they he placed her back on that. Um, Oceans had not prescribed her her seizure medication. Um, Dr. Colwell then re-prescribed her her seizure medication, which I'm kind of concerned because I'm afraid since that wasn't, you know, done at Oceans, I feel like it's going to counteract the medications that she's currently on. Okay. Now, she's not purposefully not doing services, correct? Um, No, sir. In other words, she, she just got delayed because of the stay at Oceans. Yes. Okay. What are you doing to help her complete her services? Um, I have sent in for, um, let me see real quick. We have, I have sent in for her OSAR. They should be giving her call for that. Um, and I sent in also for her psychological and she does have that set up. Um, after our visitation yesterday, she has set up all of her services besides parenting classes and the OSAR that they will be calling her to schedule. Okay. All right. Thank you. I passed the witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Flores, uh, how many medications did you meet with uh, Ms. Atkins recently? Yes. And how many medications is she on? Um, as of yesterday, I took a picture of 14. Okay. And did she in any way admit that they cause problems or drowsiness? Yes. And how did she state that? Um, she stated, um, we were talking about her services, that some of her services might have to be in person. Um, and she stated that she would prefer it virtual because sometimes the medication makes her drowsy and she is unable to drive. And is this a concern with uh, being able to take care of the boys and get them where they need to go? Yes. Okay. Um, going back to Utah and Montana, are there any educational delays or issues? With um, no, sir. Okay. So the school's doing everything that they need to do to keep the kids on track? Yes. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Are either of the children on any kind of psychotropic medications? No, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. Does anybody have further questions for Ms. Flores? No, no, Your Honor. Mr. Alley, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. I'm rest. Thank you. Mr. Pearl, any witnesses? Your Honor, I'd like to call my client, Jennifer Atkins. Ms. Atkins, um, have you had trouble communicating with Erica Flores? Yes. And what trouble have you had? Um, it's just kind of a problem. Of, I'll say one thing, and she kind of twists it around because I don't think she understands. Now, like what do you mean by that? Like, no, I'll talk to each other. like with what my medications, by she... Uh, I'll say like when he added back the um, anti seizures, that's because when I was at Oceans and they took me off of it, I was having seizures. So when I came back to town and got back with my uh, doctor here in town, Mr. Colwell, Dr. Colwell, um, that was an issue because I kept hitting my head and having night seizures. So he put me back on my seizure medication because it wasn't, it was neglectful of them to take them off of me, just jerk them off like that. Okay. And is your medication causing you to be too drowsy to take for you to take care of your children? At the moment, but that goes away after a while. Okay. I just need time to adjust to it. So are you saying to the court right now, you, you are unable to take care of your children because you're too drowsy and you haven't adjusted to your medication? Yes. And it's very unheard of to be put on like three different antidepressants. So my doctor and I, neither one understand why it was, that is over-medicated. No matter who you talk to, they're going to say that's a lot of medication. Why was Montana, why was he had such extensive dental work? What, why would, why hadn't he taken care of his teeth in the past? Um, I, well, during COVID, I'd set an appointment for him already. And then I guess I just hadn't reset an appointment. And when the children were taken, they had, Counseling worked out for Utah. He had an appointment. They had dental appointments coming up, but they were taken ahead of it. He had screening for learning, Montana had. Um, I showed Ms. Flores all the paperwork where they had these things in order, lined up to be done, but they were taken away before it had the opportunity to be done. Okay. Uh, was Ms. Flores correct when she said that you woke up one morning and you couldn't find your children, so you called your mom? And that she she let you know that they were in foster care. 
Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, what what can Erica Flores do in the future to have better communication with you? Um, I think it's just something we both need to work on because when I say something, I, I'm being as detailed as possible. And if it gets twisted and I say, you know, no, she needs to quit repeating it back to me and understand that when I say no, that's not right. That means no, that's not right. All right, I pass the witness. All right, Mr. Alley, questions? No, no. Well, yeah, if, 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 please, the court, I apologize. I just need to ask a couple of questions. Okay. Ms. Atkins, did you, were you present when the service plan was developed? I don't remember. Every, everything they do is so fast that I kind of have to play catch up with the paperwork when they leave. Do you know what services you're supposed to be working? Yes, sir. And do you understand those services? Yes, sir. I made all the appointments yesterday. And did you sign the service plan? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll pass with you, Sean. All right, Mr. Adams? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Perlin, any other witnesses? No, Judge. Mr. Uh, Adams? Respond at rest. Mr. Adams, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. We rest. Mr. Adams, recommendation? Just that the department remain temporary managing conservators and that the child's or that the kid this the kids stay in the foster care that they're at. Okay. All right. And Casa, anything to add? Nothing to add, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Then I will continue the department's temporary management conservator, continue the children's current placements. I will order uh, that Ms. Atkins complete the services contained in her service plan. We'll have the next hearing and initial permanency hearing on April 3rd, 2024. That will be by Zoom, just like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two before April 3rd to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. An initial permanency hearing. All right, that Mr. will be with hearing. us for the department. CASA is with us. Mr. Harris is with us representing the children. Mr. Jackson is with us representing the mother, Ms. McCauley. Mr. Jackson, I don't see her in my waiting room. Were you expecting her? Yes, sir, I was. Uh, um, uh, she was in my office for a consult yesterday, and so okay. I was expecting her. Okay. Well, she not with us. Uh, Mr. McCauley is not with us. My understanding from reading the report is he's currently incarcerated. Is that right? Okay. Do we know where he's at just for my notes? Randall County, I believe you are. Okay. All right. Um, and do we know that he is, well, we can check. Haley, if you check to be sure he is still incarcerated, if so, well, let's go ahead and appoint him an attorney. I can do that. Okay. Where are they currently placed? They are currently placed with an aunt and uncle in Tampa. And is that placement meeting all their needs at this time? Yes, they are. Um, any special issues or special needs that have arisen that we need to make the court aware of today? Um, no, um, Joshua is doing behavioral um, therapy and Gracie is starting speech therapy. And the current placement is making sure that they attend all of their scheduled appointments? Yes, they are. The mother of these two children is Desiree McCauley. Yes. And there was a service plan that was ordered for Miss McCauley to work. Has she begun working the services set forth in that service plan? Yes. Recently, she has started working those services. Has she completed any of those services at this time? She um, and Ozar was not originally ordered, um, but she did admit to doing drugs. So the department did ask her to do an Ozar assessment and she has completed that. And were the were there recommendations from that OSAR assessment? Yes, for her to do a drug and alcohol class and the Padre um, class. <clears throat> Are you asking them that the court may order that she complete those uh, two uh, programs also? Yes. Um, currently, is she? Do you know where she's living? Um, as far as I know, she's homeless um, and staying from house to house with friends. Does she have transportation? Yes, she does have transportation now. And and is that recent that she's just obtained transportation? Yes. Um, when her husband Joshua went to jail, um, she was able to get his truck. Is she currently working? No, she is not. Have you asked her to drug screen? Yes, I have. And has she complied with any drug screens you've asked? No, she has not. Um, 
part of the reason that these children are in care is because of substance abuse? Yes. Are you asking then that the court order that uh, Desiree be ordered to uh, hair follicle and uh, UA drug screen today? Yes. Do you know where she is currently hopping homes at? Um, she's in Amarillo. She does have a visit in Pampa today um, at four, and she also has a meeting with me in Pampa today at three thirty. So, so she's going to be in in Pampa. Would you ask that the judge order that that drug screen be done in Pampa? Yes. Is she getting visitation with the boys? Um, with Gracie and Joshua, yes, she is. And I apologize. Okay, and is. Is she exercising that visitation? Yes, she is. Joshua is currently incarcerated in Randall County? That is correct. Do you know what he's incarcerated for? Um, continuing domestic violence and, I believe, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Um, do you have any idea what his release date might be? Um, no, I do not. <clears throat> have you discussed uh, services with him? I personally have not. Um, I was off work when he um, got arrested, so I did have a coworker go out and visit with him and go over his service plan, and he did sign that. So it's your understanding that he, he knows what services he needs to work if he's released from jail? That is correct. Would you agree with me that currently it would be unsafe to return these children to either parent? Yes. And that it would be contrary to their general welfare to do so? Yes. Are you therefore asking that the court continue the department as temporary management conservator of both of these children? Uh, we leave cur their current placement where it's at. Yes. I'll pass the witness, Ron. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Judge. Ma'am, uh, I'm looking at your uh, the, the permanency report to the court for the temporary hearing that was filed on November the 27th that you signed off on. Yes. And in that, I'm looking under Desiree, uh, where you address uh, submitting to random drug testing. And on November 21st, 2023, it stated waiting for results. So I interpret that to mean that she took a drug test that time, that day. She, I did ask her to go that day and she stated she would, but she did not go. So uh -huh. at that time, I was under the impression that she was going. Yes, ma'am. And um, in addition, let's see, uh, are you aware that she's done uh, three sessions of counseling with uh, Stephen Jennings? Yes, I know. Well, not three. I thought she had did two. I know one was her um, social, uh, psychosocial, um, and then she did one counseling session, and then I believe she was at another one yesterday. Yeah, that was my understanding. On the uh, psychosocial, um, I guess I don't know if there's a misunderstanding or if I'm reading things wrong, but in the service plan, it, it's uh, the service plan calls for a psychological evaluation and she, and it didn't say anything about a psychosocial assessment. Or um, all wanting to both? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, Steve does those um, automatically before he starts the individual counseling um, session with them. So that's why she did have a psychosocial also. Okay. And as far as her uh, not having employment, I mean, she's, pretty much been without transportation since this case began. Is that right? Yeah. Well, when I got the case, um, I believe that week, actually, she had her car had got repossessed. So it's it's been about a month and a half or so since she hasn't had a vehicle. OK. And um, and as far as the visits, uh, from, from what I had gathered, she had made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven visits at least since uh, since August. Does that sound right to you? Um, I would have to go back and check. I know um, for my visit, since I got the case in October, um, she's been to four here in Pampa. Okay. And then she has did virtual visits on when she could not make it here. Um, we did accommodate virtual visits for her. Okay. Uh, on the subject of visitation, um, let's see that I think you testified that the, the uh, kids are with a, an aunt and uncle. Is that right? That is correct. Um, I was going to ask on her behalf if you would have a problem with her having some sort of supervised visitation or access to the kids 
on Christmas or Christmas Eve this year. Um, I would have to staff that with my supervisor, but I don't believe that would be an issue as long as the aunt and uncle were there to supervise. But I would have to have the, I would have to have that staffed. I understand. Would you do that, please? Yes, I absolutely can. And uh, as far as the visits concerned, uh, how are those how are those going? Are they going all right? Yes, I believe they're going good. Yes, I was able to watch a little bit of her visit last week, um, and it seemed to go really well. Okay, very good. Then I'll uh, pass the witness. You know. I've already questioned Ms. Slagle. Mr. Harris. Thank you, Judge. Um, Ms. Slagle, uh, Josh is currently attending Head Start. Is that right? I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. It yeah. Came out. Josh is currently attending Head Start. Am I correct? Yes, he is. All right. Good enough. And then I guess Gracie's in daycare. Yes, she is. I believe this is about her third week um, in daycare. And she did get evaluated for speech therapy. And we'll start that soon. Okay. All right. Good enough. And uh, uh, the uh, both the Head Start and the daycare are going well, and, and the uh, uh, the uh, counseling for uh, for Josh has really helped him, has it not? Yes. Because he was having, I uh, understand, some behavior, some pretty serious behavior problems, and and those are getting resolved with the help of therapy. Yes, they are. All right. Good enough. And uh, uh, so, what? Uh, uh, what we need to do, I guess, and, and your recommendation is, is we leave the kids with current placement and uh, continue uh, the, the supervised visitation. It's it's weekly, is it not? Is it every Wednesday? Yes, it's every Wednesday from four to five. And I believe she gets two phone calls a week also. All right. Okay. All right. Good enough. And uh, we'll continue the behavioral therapy and the, and the speech therapy and uh, uh, we'll uh, uh Assume those will, those will continue to work well. So, Judge, I believe that's all I have of her. Thank you. All right. Uh -huh. You may have testified to this, Ms. Slagle. Are either of these children on psychotropic meds? No, they are not. Okay. Do the do the children enjoy the visits with their mom? Yes, they do. Okay. Your report said that she has missed six uh, drug screenings from August to November. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, she is not drug screened um, at all for the department. Okay. And this case has been going on since June. So, yes, June twenty ninth. Uh, you, if, if are you going to have any contact with her today as far as her visitation? Um, I'm meeting with her. I'm supposed to meet with her today at three thirty before her visit. Um, I will try to get a hold of her before then. Okay. Uh, well, just let her know. Uh, I don't like to penalize the children by stopping visits, but let her know if she doesn't drug test, then uh, I'm going to stop the visits. Yes, and I've had that discussion with her also pretty well, recently. You can just tell her that the court, I'm just going to make it part of the ruling is that she, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop a visit today, but she needs to drug screen before her next visit or there's not going to be any visits. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll let her know too, Judge. I'm sorry. I will let her know as well. Okay. It's one thing to miss one or two and have an excuse for it. It's another thing to go four months without drug screening when repeatedly asked to. So. Okay, um, and is it, anybody can tell me this, is it still next step where we test in Tampa? I, I believe so, Your Honor. Okay, okay. All right then, um, Mr. Alvey, did you have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor, I rest. All right, Mr. Jackson, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. Okay, uh, Mr. Harris, any witnesses? No, sir, thank you. All right, Mr. Harris, recommendations? Uh, Judge, uh, let's leave uh, the little ones where they are right now. Uh, I think we certainly need to uh, continue the therapy for uh, uh, for both. And I think the visits are okay at, at two hours as long as she drug screens. And uh, so I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for that and uh, uh, and leaving her where she's at. Okay. Leaving where they're at, Judge. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Ross, anything to add? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. All right, then. I will continue the Department of Temporary Management Conservator, continue the children's current placements. I'll order uh, Ms. McCauley to complete a drug and alcohol class, complete the Padre program, and I'll order her to both hair strain and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. today at Next Step in Pampa. I'll further order, I'm not going to stop that visit. That visit will go forward assuming she shows up. However, then I will order that her future visits be suspended until she uh, uh, takes the hair strain and UA drug screen. Okay, uh, I'll set the next hearing, a permanency review for, for April 3rd, 2024. That will be by Zoom, like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys we can go on the court's online. Mr. Alvey's with us for the department. Casa is with us. 
Mr. Harris is with us representing the children. Ms. Grant is with us representing the mother, Ms. Lingenfelter, who is with us. And Mr. Pirtle is with us representing the father, Mr. Lingenfelter, who is with us. I have Heather Galloway and Cassie Coppock in the waiting room. Cassie Coppock is my caseworker, Your Honor. Okay. Heather Galloway will be on another case that we have later this morning. All righty. Okay, uh, Mr. Alvey, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Ms. Cassie Coppock. And where is he currently placed? He's placed in a foster home in Center, Texas. And is that home meeting all of his needs at this time? Yes. It's my understanding that he has some special needs that are being addressed at that placement? Yes. What are those? Um, so he has level three autism. He has a feeding tube. Um, he just got tubes put in his ears. Um, he has a lot of therapies like physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. And these are things that we discovered once we took possession of this job. Yes, he, he had the feeding tube when he was in the hospital after he got removed. Is the current placement making sure that he is making all of his appointments? Yes. And are they, do they have special uh, training to make sure that they can handle a child of, in this, with these circumstances? Yes, he is a primary medical needs child. So he is in a special foster home that has that training that can take care of him. Child's <laughs> mother is Leslie. Uh, Lingenfelter, is that correct? Yes. And has Leslie been working the services she was ordered to work? Yes. Um, has she completed any of those services at this time? She completed her rational behavior therapy. She completed a parenting course at the Pregnancy Support Center there in Pampa. Um, she, is, she did complete a psychological evaluation. Um, she is in couples and individual counseling with Tina Souter. Um, they are doing an autism parenting class right now. Um, I think they've got a couple more or one more at least. Um, she has housing and employment. Matthew uh, Langenfelter is the father. Yes. And the way you were talking about the services that Leslie was working, I'm assuming that Matthew's working those same services. Yes. Um, are, are they being prepared to handle the issues that have arisen concerning their child yes um we we're going over um they're creating a parenting book to i uh, or to go over all of the medical needs that the child has to learn as much as possible they are first-time parents so um, they need as much education as possible especially to deal with a child that has um, these medical needs are they able to attend any <laughs> appointments for their child um virtually so that they're aware of what the doctors are saying and how to handle some of those issues? We have not done that. I can talk to the foster mom to see if that's something that could be done. In the meantime, do you feel like it would be contrary to uh, John's continued welfare if he was returned home today? Yes. And do you feel like the parents just are not quite ready for that to happen yet? Yes. So it would be unsafe for John to be returned home? At this time, yes. Are you asking then that the court continue the department as temporary managing conservator, um, that we continue the current placement for the child and that the parents continue to learn how to handle this child's um, medical needs? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Ms. Grant. I see, are you beginning to look at something I know this is a medically restrictive home, but are you continuing to look at something closer to Amarillo so we can begin the process of getting the child closer to visits with the parents? The The placement that he's in was the only placement that was available. Um, so no, we haven't looked for any other placements for him. Okay. Would that be something that would be good to start doing considering that we need to get ready to get these parents physically reunited at some point? 
I, I can put in a placement request. I, I think it would be difficult for John to, you know, be moved to another home just with all of the needs that he has. Um, but I do understand what you're you're saying because um, the best way for them to learn is to actually be able to have some hands-on um, education. Okay, I understand. So we agree that we need to at least try to start looking that direction and see if it's even possible, correct? Yes, we can do that. Okay, and you mentioned the autism class. Is that a class that's been added? Yes, we added the autism class. We were able to find one that was online for them to be able to do. Okay, and have you added that since the last time the court ordered the service plan? Yes. So are you asking today that the autism class be added as a court order to the service plan for both parents? Yes. And are there any issues with the virtual visitation, albeit very difficult with a child of this age in any case? No, there's been no issues. Okay. Um, and have the parents had any face-to-face -face visits since the child was moved to Central Texas? No, they have not. It's I, I think it's around 10 hours. Okay. Um, is John able to travel at all to possibly do a meet halfway type visitation? I'm not sure about that because he was transferred by ambulance down to his uh, current foster home because of the feed and he's on a continual feeding tube. So okay. it's, I, it, I, I'm just not sure that'd be have, something I have to check into. Okay. So the 10 hour travel by the parents, would you be willing to look into any assistance for gas, gas uh, cards or anything you might have available to them to assist them in getting that direction if necessary, since John cannot travel? Yes, we could look into that. Okay. Thank you. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Pearl. Thank you, Judge. Um, Cassie, has Mr. Lingerfelton done everything that you've asked him to do so far? Yes. And then have you given him more parenting classes to take? Yes. And has how many more does he have to take? I, I don't really think there's like a number of how many needs to take. We're just trying to prepare him to take care of his child that has all the needs that he has. So um, when I find or when I come across something and we also have a parent support worker that um, has been helping them and going into the home, um, I'll bring them that education or send them an email so that they can look at that so that they can gain as much knowledge um, as, as possible so that they can take care of this child so that, you know, we're not ever in the situation again. And he never has to, you know, go to the hospital and be in the condition he was when he came into care. Okay. And then, uh, are the parenting classes the same thing as the autism class or is that se something separate? It, it is a parenting class, but it's, it's focused on autism. Okay. I passed the witness. <laughs> right. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Kopic, is the current home a special needs home that is taking care of this child? Yes. Now, with regard to um, transportation, are there issues with mom and dad's transportation? They they don't have transportation right now. Um, they are saving up to get a car. Leslie did get her driver's license. Matthew's still working on that. Um, they do, um, you know, they know about like Panhandle Transit, and we've talked about stuff like that. Um, and they rely on, uh, I believe it's his brother to help with uh, getting them places that they need to go. Now, is the current placement um, safe and appropriate, meeting all the needs of the child? Yes. And the parents are <clears throat> the parents are working their services and doing the best they can with a with a child with so many needs is that correct yes nothing further judge Ms. Ms. Thank you. all right thank you anybody else have further questions for Ms. Coppin no your honor all right Mr. Alvey any other witnesses no your honor I rest thank you Ms. Grant any witnesses none today your honor we rest all right thank you Mr. Pertle witnesses your honor I'd like to request to be put in a room be put in a room with my client um He's asked to speak to me privately. Okay. All right, then, Mr. Pertle, any witnesses? Your Honor, I'd like to, like to call my client, Matthew Linger, Linger felt to judge. Now, Matthew, um, you told me you'd like to tell the judge what classes you've taken so far. Would you go ahead and, and tell the judge? Yes. Um, so we have done parenting, rational behavior, psychological behavior. Tina's still the ongoing. Uh, we're still working with her. Um, introduction motor development child development, disability, and autism, autism spectrum disorder, and children, child care and nutrients. And Tina, which is our counselor, she's she got a book and she just read the first chapter for us when we were visiting. Um, the, the other autism course next Tuesday is going to be our last class. Um, and then on the feeding tube, um, 
me and Cassie and my wife has talked about it uh, when she came over last week. Um, it was a, she is a 50 50. Uh, we don't know if there's a class or not, but I found YouTube videos on, it describes every single thing, uh, how to clean it, how to work on it. Uh, I sent it to Miss Cassie as well. I don't know if she looked over it or not, but, uh, we have done those. Okay. So, so, so you're trying to teach yourself, um, by looking at YouTube and watching feeding tube classes. Yes. Okay. You think how much, how many, how many classes or how many of those two YouTube videos have you watched? Um, so far they're like eight minutes a piece. And, um, if you give me 10 seconds, I'm sorry. Well, just, you can just give me an oh, estimate. Uh, I, I think there's like 10 or 12. Okay. I believe. And you know, also you were, you were asked to take four more classes, I believe just recently. And has that been completed? Yes. Okay. And y'all did that on the internet. Yes. Right? And did you have to stay up all night to do that? Yes, sir. Okay. Or try to jump through all these hoops that you can so, so you get your child back. Yes, sir. Now, you from your classes now, you know more about the autism and how uh, changing the atmosphere of the child could be harmful to the child, correct? Yes, sir. So you're not asking for any sudden changes to be made right now, are you? No. It, no, sir. Okay. What do you want to happen with your child? Um. I understand what Miss uh, Miss Stacy Grant and you want, and I want as well, to mm -hmm. move our child to be coming here sooner because you know seeing my son is the the most important thing. Sorry, <clears throat> but with autism level three, he he will have to. If we change, if we make a really big movement for it, um, it will have effect on him. Yeah. And, and you you don't want any negative effects on no. your child, do you? No. So you understand and, this this is a process, and you want to yes. be gentle about it. And Miss Lauren, our, his foster parents, has been super great. Every time we ask questions, she gave us on updates on everything. So, um, wish we would love and uh, to do and everything to move him closer. And I would love that. Uh, but I feel like if I, I don't want that in a one day period, I, I, I want my son to take two weeks to a month to, to get used to it, then about to get kind of move and get like the knowledge kind of situation. At least all of his classes are telling me, and I understand he's two and a half. Um, but I feel like that will still have a, a big effect on him. One other thing C CPS wanted you to do was, um, have transportation. Have you tried to save money for, uh, buying a car yes i have a uh, thousand dollars okay. on me is, right now is that in your hand right now yes it's Did you hold it up hold it up for the judge you don't have to count it for us but yeah is, that, is there uh, <laughs> is there a thousand dollars mr pearl that's not necessary we don't need any theatrics here okay, okay well i just wanted to, he wanted you to know judge that he's trying to complete that too so i'll pass the witness all right. Uh, let me tell you, I, I applaud both, what both of these parents are doing. They're jumping through every hoop that's been put in front of them. So the court recognizes that. Trust me. So, all right, Mr. Alby, did you have questions for Mr. Lingenfelter? I do not, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Grant? I do not, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Harris? No, sir. Okay. All right, then, Mr. Pertle, any other witnesses? No other witnesses. Rest, Judge. All right, thank you. Mr. Harris, recommendations? Your Honor, this is a this is a child with lots of special needs at this point. I applaud the parents for doing what they're doing and can, hopefully they will continue that. But at this point, judge, I would uh, recommend that the placement remain the same. Okay. Thank you. And toss anything to add. Nothing, your honor. We agree with the ad item. Okay. All right, then uh, Mr. Pertle, I have a question for you. Uh, you filed an original answer and a counterclaim back in July. I have a copy of it. I don't show that. Well, I say you filed. I don't show a file stamp copy, but did you, in fact, file that with the clerk? I believe so, Judge. Okay. And in that uh, answer and counterclaim, you've requested a jury trial. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I, I'm talking to my client about it, and um, I'm not sure we're going to go through with that or not. That, you don't, you've don't. got it on file, though. I just wanted to be sure of that. So uh, until you tell me otherwise, I'll assume that you still want the jury trial. Uh, as of right now, Judge, the answer is yes. Okay, sure. I'm not, I'm not trying to back you in a corner. I just have to put it on a separate list when we get ready for finals. So I understand. All right, then. Um, I will continue. I may have already said this. No, I haven't. I'll continue the department's temporary managing conservator, continue John's current placement. Uh, I'll order both parents to complete the autism, autism parenting class that they're already uh, about to complete, it sounds like. So uh, 
again, I applaud both parents for what you're doing. I don't know that there's anything else you could be doing that you're not doing. So just stick with it. Hopefully we can resolve this uh, case in a favorable light. So our next hearing will be a permanency review hearing. That will be on April 3rd, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing. So parties and attorneys can go on the court's online yeah, docket a day or two in advance order to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. Mr. Alvey's with us for the department. Mr. Harris is with us for the children. Ms. Grant is with us representing the mother, Ms. Galloway, who is with us. And Mr. Pirtle is with us representing the father, Mr. Galloway, who is with us. I have Bridget Jordan and Megan Jetcoat in the waiting room. Mr. and Ms. Galloway were ordered to work services in order for their children to remain in their home. Have they been compliant with the services that you've asked them to work? Yes. Um, have they completed all of their services? No, not currently. This is a TFF case and the report says that they are in stage two. What does that mean? Um, the, I believe stage two is the reconstructive stage. Um, and that's, uh, that's working on communication. Mainly, and that's the main focus. Are the children safe in their current uh, home? Yes, sir. Currently, their their main home is with the mom, Heather, and they are having supervised visitation with dad at the CPS office in Pampa. And both parents are continuing to work the services or? Correct. And that includes counseling uh, for, for the parties to be able to overcome some of the difficulties that they've uh, incurred? Yes. So are you asking... Because this is in stage two, are you asking that the con court continue the order to participate in services at this time? That is correct. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. I'll pass it with you, Sean. All right. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Ms. Jordan, um, what type of support financially does the mother have right now with the parents being separated? Um, I believe she is supporting the kids solely financially. Okay, so Mr. Mr. Galloway, to your knowledge, is not contributing any payments towards the kids or their home and is not court ordered to do so right now? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And are all the children's needs being met by the mother? Yes. Pass the witness, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Pardo. Great. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Jordan, has my client, Douglas Galloway, Galloway been working on his uh, communication and skills and trying to use positive reinforcement with his, um, with his children? Um, during the visits with the kiddos, he, um, he has gotten better at playing with each of the kids. Um, however, as far as their behavior is concerned, he does not take much action in their discipline. All right. I pass the witness. All right. Mr. Harris. Ms. Jordan, with this program that the parents and the family are involved in, how many phases do we have? Four. Four. Okay. And typically, how long does it take to get through each phase? Um, that is on a on an each family basis. So we're halfway through. Yes. And I believe um, I just received the monthly update for um, for this family. And I believe at the end of the month, Miss Karen moved this family on to stage three. OK. And the children are currently residing with the mother. Correct. And she's providing all the basic needs and, and providing a safe and stable environment for the kids. Yes. Now, after the visitations with dad, are the children's behaviors as severe as they were um, back in October? No, they are. Mom is uh, able to calm them down a lot faster um, and they uh, they are able to um, better regulate themselves in the home. Okay. And are you wanting to completely complete the family first program before um, dismissing out of this case? Yes. Pass away to judge. All right. Thank you. Anyone have further questions for Ms. Jordan? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Alvey, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. Rest. 
Thank you, Ms. Grant. Any witnesses? No, Your Honor. My client only wanted to confirm that she was at stage three, and I believe Ms. Jordan covered that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pertle, any witnesses? I'd like to call my client, Douglas Galloway. Thank you. All right. Mr. Pertle. All right. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Galloway, you heard the testimony from the caseworker saying that uh, you're not supporting the children right now, or, or what are you doing to support the children? Uh, $750 of every paycheck I go goes into our joint account. Okay. And so that's is, every two weeks I get paid. So every two weeks you're putting in $750 in your wife's account? In our joint account. Okay. And are you allowing her to spend that money on the children? Yes. Okay. Do you try to uh, take that money out before she can get to it? No. Um, do you believe that you're learning from your classes and being able to commun communicate better with your children? Yes. Okay. You're trying to use positive reinforcement when you to redirect your children. Try. Yes. Okay. You'd like to tell the judge anything? Anything further? No, sir. All right. All right. I pass the witness. Thank you, Mr. Alby. No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Grant. Uh, just one question, Your Honor. Mr. Galloway, out of the $750 into the joint account, how much of it are you spending? None. I don't use our joint account. I got my own account. Thank you. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Mr. Harris, any questions? No, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, then, Mr. Harris, recommendations? Your Honor, it sounds like the the parents are doing everything they can along with the, the family in full to, to finish this uh, program. It seems like they could have a couple of phases left. So uh, I'd ask for another compliance hearing to make sure we're all done before we. Discuss all right. It. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, how long do y'all want out for your next compliance hearing? Judge, if you'll give us 60 days, they might be able to finish the program in, in that time period and we might be able to dismiss. Okay. I've got January 17th and I have February 21st. Let's let's do February twenty first. Okay. Okay, then I will order the parents to continue working the services that have been previously ordered, which they are obviously doing. Uh, and I will set another compliance hearing for February twenty first, two thousand twenty four. That will be by Zoom, like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket to see exactly what time that hearing will take. Follow any order to participate. Mr. Alvey's with us for the department. Mr. Harris is with us representing the children. Mr. Jackson is with us representing uh, the mother, Ms. Arredondo. I say he's with us. He's muted. Uh, Ms. Arredondo is not with us unless she is in Mr. Jackson's office. Ms. Lucero is not with us representing the father, Gabriel Solis, and he is not with us. Mr. Jackson, were you expecting your client? Uh, your Honor, I've not had contact with my client. Okay. All right. I'll watch the waiting for, for Ms. Lucero. We've got a full docket today, so we're going to go ahead and proceed in her absence as well as the parents' absence. All right, Mr. Alvey, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Ms. Bridget Jordan. Okay. This is a case where Ms. Aaron Dondo, Mr. Solis were ordered to work services. Correct. There, there was another party that was ordered to work services. Is that correct? Yes. Who was that? That was Angelica Flores. Okay. And, and Ms. Flores, um, well, let me back up. Ms. Arandondo is Ms. Flores' mother, correct? Yes. And is she working the services that she was ordered to complete by this court? Which one? Ms. Yeah. Arandondo or Ms. Flores? Yeah. Ms. Arandondo. That's who I'm asking, and I apologize. Yes, she is. And has she completed all of her services at this time? No, she has not. What services, if any, has she completed? She has not completed any services. They have gotten a an extremely slow start in getting their services set up. All right. So she still needs to be, we need to continue the case for her so that she can continue to be provided the services that she needs. Correct. All right. Her daughter, 15 years old, is that correct? Yes. She was also ordered to work services. Yes. Is she working the services that she was ordered to work? Yes. And 
Would you agree with me that she has also had a slow start? Yes, that is correct. And that she has not completed all of the services? Correct. And Andesia Flores is the mother to Xander. Yes. And is it my understanding that Xander passed away? Yes, sir, on Monday. Um, do we know what caused that? Um, no, I believe the autopsy is scheduled sometime um, this week, either today or tomorrow. That, that's a real concern in this case. Would you agree with me? Yes, sir. Um, my understanding from Ms. Arndondo when I spoke with her on Monday is the doctor told Angesia and Gabriel that it his finding was that it was asphyxiation. But, I mean, Xander was a very small baby. It could have been, I mean, that's what that's what the autopsy is for. Yeah. Judge, do we want this on YouTube? Uh, it's out now. I didn't think about that. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, are we going to need to make sure that Ms. Flores and Ms. Arandondo receive appropriate counseling um, for the loss of this child? Yes, sir. I did notify their counselor this morning. Um, they're, they're seeing the same counselor. So I did notify her this morning of the loss. Um, however, they have both been ordered to do parenting classes, and I don't necessarily see a need for that at this time. Okay. Xander's father is Gabriel Solis. Correct. He was also ordered to work services. Yes. Is he complying and working any services? Yes, sir. And, and would you categorize his compliance in the same uh, category as, as Ms. Arandondo and Ms. Flores? Yes, sir. Very slow start. So even though the grandchild that we were trying to protect is no longer with us, we still think it's best for all of these parties to continue services. Um, yes, sir. there is also another child in the home. Ms. Arndondo has a, a younger child. She's 10 who's in the home. And Andesia is only 15, correct? Correct. So you're asking the court to continue this case, continue to allow these folks to get the services that they need. Yes, sir. And in order for me to request a drug and alcohol assessment, I have to have all parties complete a complete drug testing, um, which none of them have done. And so I'd like to ask the court if we could order them to do so. And do you want a UA and hair follicle drug screen for Correct. all? Okay. I I'll pass the witness, sure. All right. Um, Ms. Jordan, how old is Gabriel Solis? He is 19. And Angesia is 15 now. She was 14 when, when uh, she got pregnant. Um, I believe so, if my math is Wait. correct. Yeah, okay. Has Was law enforcement involved in this? I, I am unaware if they were, but That's I don't the, think so. For, for the record, they were notified when we began our investigation. Okay, hey, good, good. Okay, all right, Mr. Jackson. No questions. Uh, Ms. Lucero is still not with us. Uh, Mr. Harris. Judge, I also have no questions. Okay. All right, then, uh, Mr. Harris, recommendations? Judge, we'll continue the uh, the services uh, that we're, uh, we're trying to get uh, a movement in this case uh, uh, and get the parties to get drug testing done so they can go forward with their evaluations. Okay. Okay, then. Um, then I will order uh, all three of the parents, uh, that being Ms. Arredondo, Mr. Solis, and Angesia and Flores, to continue working the service previously ordered. I'll order those three uh, parents to also hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. today at Next Step in Pampa. Uh, Mr. Alley, how far out do you want your compliance hearing? 
Judge, if you'll set it on that February date that we set the last case, if, if that's okay. appropriate. All right, then I'll set a compliance hearing for February 21st, 2024. That will be by Zoom, like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket. We're here on the final hearing. Let's see what time that is. Mr. Alby's with us for the department. Uh, Ms. Talley's with us for CASA. Mr. Michelson is with us representing the children. Mr. Harris is with us representing the mother, Ms. Uh, Thomas, who is with us. And Ms. Grant is with us representing the father, Mr. Dorman, who is not with us. Ms. Grant, were you expecting your client? Sorry Ms. Grant, were you expecting your, you no, expecting your, Honor, your my client? client? My client has um, executed an affidavit of voluntary relinquishment, Your Honor. Okay. My understanding, both parents have? Yes, yes. Jess, they have. That's correct. And they're, on, and they're on file. I don't know if Tahiti's is, Judge. I sent it to Leslie, and she said she was going to get a couple signatures on it and get it e-filed, but I haven't seen that come across yet. Hey, Leslie says it's filed. I would not have expected anything different. Not at all, dude. <laughs> all right. Okay, then. Uh, I have Peggy Cheney, Cassie Kopic, and I have Lorraine Lacero in the waiting room. Haley, if you'll find out, I don't show her on any further cases today unless she's covering for somebody. Sorry about that delay, Judge. You caught me eating. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> we're through here, I'm going straight to Coney Island. That's the reason I come to Pampa. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> we'll play, Jenny. We'll play. <laughs> All right, then, Mr. Alvey, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Miss Cassie Kovic. And they are currently placed where? They're placed in a foster home in Amarillo. And they've been in that foster home for some time now? Yes. Um, is that placement meeting all of their needs? Yes. Um, and have the girls been doing well in that placement? Yes, they've been doing great. Um, they've developed uh, past the point where they were when we placed them in that placement? Yes. And and everything has been positive? Yes. They have a sibling who's also placed in that placement? Yes. Um, the placement, um, can you tell me what the names of the placement are, the people's names? Landon Wilson is the foster dad that has the children. And has Mr. Wilson made it um, clear that he would like to be a permanent home for uh, these girls? Yes, he does want to adopt all three of the kids. And um, he's already taken steps to adopt the, the little boy who was just placed with him this year. Yes, that was his intention is to adopt that child as well. Um, in, in, do you have any concerns with him being a permanent placement for all three children? I don't have any concerns. The, the children have thrived being in that placement. Um, he takes excellent care of the girls, making sure all their medical needs are met. Um, you know, these girls do have some issues that they have, you know, therapies and stuff, and he is meeting all of those needs. The girl's mother is Miss Tahiti Thomas. Yes. If you had conversations with her and that she is, she would consent to the adoption? Yes. And, and to do that, has she uh, signed a voluntary, voluntary relinquishment of her parental rights? Yes. And um, nobody put any pressure on her as far as you know, no one forced her into signing that? That's correct. Nobody did. Now, she has requested that there be some post-termination contact between she and, and Mr. Wilson. Yes. And Mr. Wilson's agreeable to that. I, I don't know what agreement they made. I know that, you know, we are going to continue doing the visitation supervised at the office. Okay. And that's, that's what she, you and she had talked about prior to um, her signing an affidavit of relinquishment. Yes. And that we wouldn't move the children. But those weren't conditions on her signing that affidavit. No, that's just what she she wanted. Miss Thomas has struggled to become independent and have a stable home and a stable uh, income to raise her children. She has had housing, so she has an apartment, but she... Um, since we've been working with her, she hasn't had any kind of employment. 
And do you believe that it would be in the best interest of these girls for Miss Thomas's parental rights to be terminated? Yes. You believe the environment that they're in with Mr. Wilson is clearly um, a more productive environment than what they were with Miss Thomas? Yes. Mr. Dorman is the father to Lily, is that correct? Yes. Um, London's father's parental rights have already been terminated. Yes. Mr. Dorman um, doesn't live, currently doesn't live in the state of Texas, correct? To my knowledge, he lives in Kansas. Okay. And um, he cannot provide a safe and stable environment for Lily. Correct. Would you agree? Yes. All right. And he has also advised you that he would think that, or he believes that Lily would be best with Mr. Wilson. Yes. And he also signed an affidavit of relinquishment of his parental rights to Lily. Yes. You believe it would be in the best interest of Lily to have Mr. Dorman's parental rights terminated today? Yes. It would be difficult for those two girls to be separated in any form or fashion. Yes, it would. They've been together their entire life. So today, are you asking that, that on both girls that both, well, let me strike that. Are you asking that Miss Thomas's parental rights be terminated for both girls? Yes. That Mr. Dorman's parental rights be terminated for Lily? Yes. That the department be named as permanent managing conservator so that we can continue to work with Mr. Wilson towards adoption. Yes. And you believe all that's in these girls' best interest? Yes. Pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harris. No questions, Judge. Ms. Graham. Ms. Kopic, neither parent in this case claims any tribal affiliation. Is that correct? That's correct. And neither parent is being asked to pay child support subsequent to relinquishment in this case. Is that correct? That's correct. And both relinquishments were signed by you along with the parents, two witnesses, and notarized the same. Is that correct? Yes. And although Mr. Dorman did not request a post-termination contact, we can discuss that with you at a later date if he so chooses, correct? Correct. And he also has contact information for the adoptive father should he wish to con make that contact directly, does he not? I'm not sure. I, I didn't provide that to him, but I don't know if he got it by other means. Okay. Um, but to your knowledge, um, Mr. Dorman presented himself willingly at my office and uh, executed the relinquishment with no under no duress and willingly and voluntarily, correct? Correct. And that was provided to you after that, after the fact? Yes. Pass the witness, Judge. All right, thank you. Mr. Michelson? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Cassie, um, neither child is uh, taking uh, psychotropic drugs. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And are both children up to date with their medical um, requirements? Yes. Okay. And you testified earlier about them attending therapy. They're regularly attending therapy? Yes. Okay. Pass the witness. All right. Thank you. Anyone have further questions for Ms. Cotton? No, Your Honor. All right, then. Uh, Mr. Alvin, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. Arrest. Thank you. Mr. Harris, witnesses? No, sir. Ms. Grant? No witnesses, Your Honor. Mr. Dorman would just request to be terminated solely upon the affidavit of voluntary relinquishment and best interest of the child grounds. All right. Thank you. Okay, then. Mr. Michelson, recommendations? The ad litem believes that it's in the best interest of the children to terminate the parental rights of both parents and that the department be named PMC and that... Uh, the children remain in placement until they're adopted. Okay. All right. Casa, anything to add? Nothing to add, Your Honor. All right. Does Casa want to stay in this case or be dismissed? Uh, I believe we'd stay in, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then. Okay. Give me just a second. Rick. Okay. Then, based upon the evidence I've heard today, as well as the affidavits of relinquishment, which are on file, I do find that it's in the best interest of the children, parental rights of the mother, Tahiti Thomas, be terminated. I'll terminate those rights today based uh, solely on the affidavit of relinquishment, uh, as well as Texas Family Code Section 161.001, subsection B1K. 
I further find that it's in the best interest of uh, the child, Lily, that the parental rights of her father, Brendan Lee Dorman, be terminated. I'll terminate those rights today based solely on his affidavit of relinquishment, as well as Texas Family Code Section 161.001, subsection B1K. I'll name the Department of Permanent Managing Conservator, continue the children's current placement. Uh, I will order that Mr. Michelson and Casa are continued in the case. All other court-appointed relationships will be dismissed after all appellate and de novo periods have expired. Mr. Harris, Ms. Grant, you can discuss with your clients uh, the de novo and appellate rights. I will set the first review hearing in this case for February 7, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online, di online document day or two in advance to see Mr. Alvey is with us for the department. Ms. Talley is with us for CASA. Ms. Kincaid is with us representing the child. Mr. Barfield is with us representing the mother, Ms. Stankton. I don't see her. Mr. Barfield, were you expecting your client? Typically, Your Honor, my client appears with her husband together. Um, she was oh, notified. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. And then uh, Mr. Adams is with us representing Mr. Hatcher. Mr. Hatcher, is Ms. Ankton with you? Yes, she is. Okay. All right. So all parties are present. I have Haley Grissom and Cindy Young in the waiting room. Your Honor, just for the court's uh, awareness, I filed a motion for continuance last night. I don't know if you got that today. I talked to Haley about it. Uh, the Hatchers are agreeing to sign voluntary relinquishments uh, of Indica. I talked to Mr. Alley yesterday. He said that, uh, or he stated he didn't object to the motion for continuance. I did not talk to Ms. Kincaid. Uh, I was not able to get a hold of her. It was kind of late. Uh, it's not her fault. Uh, but we were wanting some time to be able to get those relinquishments. They just got them uh, last week, and we wanted time to get those relinquishments executed and returned okay. uh, to be able to file them. All right, Mr. Barfield, is this your client's uh, position also? I spoke with my client about this uh, as well, and she had indicated that, that, uh, that she was not opposed uh, as well. Okay. All right, then, um, Mr. Alvey, are you okay uh, granting the continuance on the parents? Judge, it's, it's my understanding that Mr. Hatcher and Ms. Ankton are going to sign affidavits of relinquishment. And, and and if they're going to sign those affidavits, then I don't have any opposition to continuing this. Uh, if I do have a problem, we sent out our original affidavits about two weeks ago, and, we, and we've just now started getting some contact from them. So I, I got some problem with that. But our dismissal date's not till March. So yeah. um, if they're going to sign those and, and, and I'm, I'm being told that they're going to, then I don't have any objections to the continuance. Okay. All right. Then, Ms. Kincaid, uh, Mr. you've heard what Mr. Alvey said. What's your position? I agree with Mr. Alvey. Okay. All right, then. Yeah, we've got plenty of time. I note that we had our last uh, permanency hearing on October 18th, so I don't think we're in any time crunch to treat this. This is a permanency hearing, so I will grant the parents' motion for continuance. How long out do you want me to set this so we can uh, conclude it? Judge, if any time after the first of the year probably would be good. I'm not sure. I mean, next week I'm going to be in trial, and then we're running into Christmas, so I don't know what the judge, the court schedule is. So it'll probably be the first of the year. Okay, uh, Haley, why don't you give us the date? First part of uh, January. Looking at January 17th, um, we already have a docket with you, Todd. Okay. okay, then I will, uh, based on the representations made by the parents today, I will uh, grant their motions for continuance. I will reset the final in this case for January 17th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket and they are so advanced to see exactly. Mr. Alvey is with us for the department. CASA is with us. Ms. Grant is with us representing the child. Ms. Kincaid is with us representing the mother, Ms. Maudlin, who is with us. The father, Stephen Collins, is not with us, and he is not in my way. Stand, Mr. Alvey. Your Honor, um, first of all, uh, Ms. Martinez was subpoenaed to be here, but because of a mediation, we're not going to need uh, her testimony. So if you would excuse her for her subpoena, please. Uh, okay. All right, Ms. Martinez, thank you for appearing. Sorry to have taken your time, but I'll release you so you can go back to your afternoon's business. Thank you. Thank you. Judge, we in, in today's hearing, we have an agreement concerning Ms. Modland. Um, 
we do not have an agreement concerning Mr. Collins, and we will want to proceed um, with the termination of his parental rights if okay. possible. All right. All right. Let's just go ahead then. Let's first announce what your agreement is with uh, Ms. Modlin. The agreement, Your Honor, and, and I'll let Ms. Grant and uh, Ms. Kincaid fix it if it needs to be fixed. But the agreement is that the department will be named Permanent Managing Conservator of Abigail. Um, she will be continued in her current placement. Um, Ms. Modlin will be named as a possessory conservator. Um, she will be ordered to pay uh, $25 a month to help offset the uh, Medicare expenses. Um, and then she will have some visitation. Um, since she's in Missouri, we will continue to do the visitation as we have been uh, currently. Um, if the child may be moved to Missouri at a later date, and then we might be able to establish some face-to-face -face, uh, visitation. Okay. All right, then, Ms. Kincaid, is this your client's agreement? It is, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Ms. Grant, are you in agreement with that? Yes, Your Honor. One expansion is that we discussed no overnights for the child in the mother's home unless there is further agreement of the parties. Um, the mother needs to establish more uh, consistency in the home prior to that beginning, and so that would require further agreement. But okay. five hours a month is what the parties are currently doing, Your Honor, and we believe five hours a month continuation is in the best interest of the child. Um, okay. And anything else in addition agreed by the parties, obviously, um, is fine with us. Okay. And if I'm wrong, Savannah, expand on that for me. Yeah, I think she's got five hours a week. A week. I'm sorry. Was I saying month? I apologize. I'm sorry, Miss. I'm sorry, Crystal. Five hours a week, Your Honor. Okay. All right then, uh, Casa. Are you in agreement with this as to Miss Modlin? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. All right then. Um, then, Mr. Alvey, you may proceed as to uh, Mr. Collins. Thank. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Miss Mavis Apoku Asante, and Abigail is currently placed with um, fictive kin grandparent in Wheeler, Texas. Yes. And she's thriving in that uh, placement. Yes. And uh, what is that grandparent's name? Uh, Ken Schaefer. And Mr. Schaefer is, is doing everything that we've asked him to do um, and taking care of Abigail well. Yes. Um, Abigail's mother is Miss Crystal Modlin. Yes. And you heard me announce what our agreement is concerning Miss um, Modlin. And is that your understanding of what we agreed to? Yes. Stephen Collins is Abigail's father. Yes. Um, he was ordered to work services um, by this court. Yes. And um, can you tell me what services he was ordered to work? Yeah, he was ordered to do a UA, which he never did. He was ordered to do uh, individual counseling, which he never did, take parenting classes, which he never did. And I was going to set up a family therapy for him. And uh, he never uh, gave me any date or time that he would be available for us to do it. And uh, he kept telling me he was always working, 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 because he had his two girls with him and he had to take care of them. So he never attempted any of the services that I ordered him to do. And was were part of those services were ordered by this court for him to complete, right? Yes. And he is not, not only has he not completed those services, he hadn't started any of those services. No, he did not. And, um, but he has been in contact with you when you've reached out to him. Yes. He always and, answers the phone. And, and, and you've reached out to him at least once a month? Yeah, more than once a month. And he understood the things that you were requesting and that the court ordered him to do. Yes. Um, and <clears throat> would you agree with me that those were reasonable services in order for him to have uh, contact with his uh, child? Yes. <clears throat> um, 
And he has not followed through with any of those orders. No. Has he exercised regular visitation with Abigail? Just one time, and I had to force him to do it. And but he's not voluntarily requested to have access to Abigail? No. Would you agree with me then that he has not had significant contact or regular visitation with Abigail? Yeah, I agree with you. The one contact he had with her, was that virtually? Yes. So he hadn't made any attempts to come to Texas to visit with her? No. And he, just for the record, he lives in Missouri also? Yes. <clears throat> And is it your understanding that he has a number of children that he's ordered to try to take care of? Yes. But he, and, and he actually has a couple of those children that reside with him, is your understanding? Yeah, he has two residing with him. Okay. Um, if Mr. Collins would have followed the order that the judge made, would that have allowed us to be confident in returning Abigail to him? Well, with Mr. Collins, he's never consistent. He gets into trouble most of the time. So I wouldn't agree for the court to even place Abigail with him. I understand that. But but if he would have worked the services, gone to counseling, done a parenting class, that would have helped him have an opportunity to have Abigail, correct? Correct. All right. <clears throat> In my understanding from your conversations with Mr. Collins that you've determined that he resides in a trailer house. Is that right? No, he used to be, but he moved into a two bedroom house. But recently on in October 27th, he got into some legal problems. And because of that, he lost those, he lost his apartment. So he's right now under house arrest, but he's allowed to go to work and uh, other places that are required of him. You know what he's under house arrest for? Yeah, he has a lot of charges, burglary, assault, property damage. Would you agree with me that he has not demonstrated that he could provide a safe and stable home for Abigail? I agree with you. Abigail has been in the care of the Texas Department of Family Protective Services for more than nine months. Yes. And... and because he was not a part of Abigail's world at the time of removal, would you agree with me that it's Mr. partially Mr. Collins' fault that Abigail was in the care of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services? Uh, I don't think it was his fault. Okay. If he would have provided a stable home, could we have provided sent Abigail to him? Yes. And he has not ever done that, correct? No. Do you, would you agree with me that her current placement is much more stable than anything that Mr. Collins has demonstrated that he could provide to her? Yeah, current placement is stable. And it's in her best interest, in your opinion, for her to remain in that placement? Yes. Are you today, therefore, asking that the court uh, terminate Mr. Collins' parental rights uh, to Abigail? Yes. And do you believe that's in Abigail's best interest? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Mr. Sante, uh, Mr. Collins' service plan, was that a reasonable uh, attempt on the part of the department to return his child to him? Yes. And I think you've already testified to this, but he's not maintained regular contact or significant contact with uh, Abigail, correct? Correct. So would you say that he's demonstrated an inability to provide uh, Abigail with a safe environment? Yeah, I would say that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, then, Ms. Kincaid, questions? Uh, briefly, um, we have an agreement as to, to Ms. Maudlin. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, just as a little update for the court, uh, Ms. Maudlin does have housing. Is that correct? Yes, she does. And she sent you... Uh, many pictures and videos of her apartment. Is that correct? Yes. And she's very proud of her apartment. Is that correct? Yes. And I'm proud of her too. And she's keeping that clean. Yes. Good. And um, she has recently obtained employment. Is that correct? 
Well, I called to verify and I was told she went one time. Okay. So she was, we'll find out more, I guess. Well, yes. Okay. Um, she maintains contact with you. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and she has cooperated with you at every step of the way. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Okay. And part of the reason that we've reached this agreement is not because Miss Maudlin doesn't love and care for Abigail. Uh, it's just that she needs time to continue to demonstrate uh, stable housing, transportation, et cetera. Um, and the department is giving her that opportunity. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. All right. Thank you. Ms. Grant? Uh, Mavis, Mr. Schaefer is in the process of becoming licensed. Is that correct? Correct. And Mr. Schaefer has agreed that it's a possibility for him to move with Abigail to Missouri to continue contact with her, even if she's reunited with her mother at some point, correct? Correct. Maintaining contact with Mr. Schaefer is in the child's best interest, would you agree? Yes. And would you agree that Abigail very much wants to maintain the contact with her mother that she's been enjoying through this case? Yes. And um, one other thing that I'm not sure we called out, but I'll just say it again, Mavis, it is also a part of our agreement that Ms. Maudlin will continue to work her service plan to completion under this agreement, correct? Correct. And that agreement will allow um, her to continue to enjoy the um, services that you can offer or assist her with to the point that you can assist her, correct? Correct. Uh, was Is there anything that Ms. Maudlin needed added to her service that was not added up to this point? No. And it's in the best interest of the child that the term that the parental rights of the father in this case be terminated, correct? Correct. Pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Anyone have further questions for Mr. Sante? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Alvin, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor, I'll rest. Thank you. Ms. Kincaid, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor, I rest. All right, thank you. Ms. Grant, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Grant, I've already heard your recommendation that you approve the uh, mediated settlement agreement between uh, all the parties and Ms. Modlin. Uh, your recommendation as to the father? It's my recommendation that the parental rights of the father be terminated based on his inability to provide a safe and stable environment for the child and his inability to engage in and complete services in this case. All right. Okay. Thank you. And Casa, anything to add? Nothing to add, to add Your Honor. We're in agreement with uh, all parties in the ad litem. Okay. Thank you. As far as uh, Ms. Modlin's uh, medical reimbursement, did y'all at the mediation, did you agree on a date that, that will become due? We didn't specify that, Your Honor, in mediation, but we could start the 1st of January, in my opinion. That, is that acceptable to everybody? Yes, Your Honor, that's what I told my client would likely happen. Okay, all right then. All right then, uh, based on what I've heard today, first of all, I will approve the mediated settlement agreement as far as Ms. Modlin's concerned. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but let's deal with Mr. Collins. I find that it's in the best interest of advocate parental rights of Stephen Collins, the father, be terminated. I'll terminate those rights today based solely on uh, Texas Family Code Section 161.001, subsections B1N, as in Nancy, and O. Uh, the rest of this, basically, I'm just approving what the mediated settlement agreement was announced. Department will be named permanent managing conservator. Ms. Modlin will be named permanent possessory conservator. Ms. Modlin will be ordered to pay $25 per month medical reimbursement to begin January 1, 2024, and be doing payable on the same day of each month thereafter until further court order. I will approve uh, and order the, the uh, visitation from Ms. Modlin that was announced, basically five hours weekly virtual at this time, and the parties have agreed and the court will order that there'll be no overnights unless the parties uh, agree otherwise in the future. Okay. Um, We've got Your a Honor, yeah, sorry. I heard, I heard a bunch of voices. I'm sorry, it was me. Maybe several of me. But um, as part of the mediated settlement agreement, um, the parties had agreed to allow me to remain on to assist Ms. Modlin, and we weren't sure if that was something you would be willing to approve or not. No, I, I think that would be I think that would be good. Uh, obviously, Ms. Grant will uh, remain in the case. And Casa, do you want in or do you want to be dismissed? Uh, we would like to stay on, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Give me just a second. Okay. Basically, then I guess I'm just saying that all the parties will remain in the case. I, I was looking for somebody to exclude, and there's nobody to exclude. So all parties will remain in the case until further court order. So now let me look. 
we'll have the first review hearing on uh, February 7th, 2024. Okay, uh, I believe this was our last case of the day. Thank you all for working out the mediated settlement agreement. So we will stand in recess. Everybody have a good rest of your week and have a good weekend. Thank you, Judge. Uh -huh. Thank you all. Thanks, Judge. Thank you. Hey, Amy? Yes, sir. Carrie told me one time during the hearing she saw a horse over your shoulder, and I, I told her last night, I said, now now she's got reindeers on her windowsill. So what's next? <laughs> you never know. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, the horses usually All come right. up to the window, but they're out in the pasture. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. I'll see you uh, Friday. Okay. Enjoy Coney Island. I'm going to. Thank you. <laughs>